Hey, everybody. Should be a fascinating chat today as we dive into using AI to improve supply chain visibility and efficiency with four kites. Uh, Shri Ram, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Evan? I'm well. Thanks for joining. Really excited for this chat. You're doing some really innovative work. Before that, maybe introduce yourself, the team and mission at Four Kites. Sure. Uh, hey, uh, I'm Sriram Nagaswamy. I'm the Executive Vice President of Technology at Four Kites. Um, have been with Four Kites for a little over seven and a half years now and uh, joined probably as the ninth person in engineering and maybe the 25th or uh, what have you worldwide. And uh, having seen, uh, you know, exponential growth over the uh, last seven and a half years uh, has been an amazing ride. Uh, and I'm very, very happy to be on this podcast. Well, thanks for being here. And let's dive in, to, uh, you know, give us an overview of what Four Kites does and the key problems it solves when it comes to supply chain, something that's on top of mind for many of us these days. Awesome, yeah. So Four Kites was basically uh, born as a company to answer two questions, Evan. Um, the questions were, where is my shipment and when will it get to its destination? Pretty fundamental. <laughs> Pretty fundamental. <laughs> and it's kind of uh, even more mind-blowing to think that it didn't exist before Foka. It's actually defined that as the primary problem point. So as you can imagine, you know, that was, um, uh, it was a, a Gartner magic quadrant defining problem that we uh, embarked on solving. And, uh, uh, you know, the testament to that was, uh, the, I think, 2019 or 2020, eventually Gartner did come out with a magic quadrant for uh, real-time visibility. And um, so that was the primary journey that Focates uh, started on uh, almost 10 years ago now. And uh, obviously, you know, as we started evolving, you know, we've started answering more questions like, um, when should a product be at what destination? Mm. And not just, you know, where is my shipment and when will it get to its destination? So I think we're getting more and more into um, order-based visibility and then trying to see how we can kind of stitch the entire picture for our uh, customers to be able to see the challenges and then obviously optimize their uh, networks. Uh, based on the challenges that are specific to them. Fascinating. So let's talk operational challenges. What are some of the biggest challenges in the real world of supply chain today? And, you know, what, what are people facing that they have to deal with? And, you know, how do you specifically address them? Sure. So, I mean, beyond just the problems of dwell, detention, and so on and so forth, right? I think the last few years black swan events have almost become the norm. So these disruptions that almost seem to happen periodically, right, on a very, very consistent basis, um, we know now that there will be an event that will cause a disruption to the entire network. But how do we overcome that disruption? How do we get as much information as possible beforehand? And then the decision-making data points that are required to be able to say, okay, this has happened. What do I pivot to? And having those data points ready, I think those are becoming the primary challenges for most of the companies that are heavily invested in their supply chains. Like how do they ensure that they have all the data points necessary ready to be able to make a decision and pivot as soon as an event occurs. Got it. Super interesting. Let's talk AI in action here. Obviously, it wouldn't be a tech chat if we weren't talking AI use cases or examples. How do you use AI to improve visibility, efficiency, or what, what other benefits uh, do you find today? Sure. Um, so AI, obviously, as you can imagine, has been as revolutionizing as can be expected. Uh, I think the number one use case that we are very, very clearly seeing is, uh, is specifically in the uh, supply chain domain, 
is unearthing data from sources that previously we thought was almost impossible. Mm. And um, so this has become, I, in fact, personally for me, this has been the biggest revelation. Um, previously, you know, there were these black holes, if you will, and uh, just extracting data from the from those sources, which are very, very crucial, but almost impossible previously to get the data that we wanted. I think AI is slowly and steadily making those data sources just part of the regular conversation, where it's slowly starting to become, oh, it's just that data source. Yeah, I can, I can absolutely pick that. And um, that unearthing of these new data sources, I think is making supply chains more and more accurate and more and more real time, which is probably the most important factor for supply chain networks. Um, so I think number one for me would be that unearthing of that data. And the second aspect I would say where I'm seeing the biggest benefit is customizing any product or feature according to that specific customer's requests. Like, if you know the SaaS world, right? Always customizations have been the most heavily frowned upon or the from a pure engineering perspective, it's the toughest to maintain. Like if you have a hundred different customizations, you're bound to break one of them with one of the releases. And uh, I think with AI more and more, that mentality is going away. And it is more about how can we ensure that we are addressing the exact problem of the customer instead of saying, I've addressed this problem, please see if this size fits you. Fantastic. So speaking of customers and customer success, um, maybe you could talk about some of your key customers, you know, how they're leveraging your technology and, you know, some of the outcomes that they're seeing with four kites. Sure. Um, I mean, purely from a, a visibility standpoint and uh, an order visibility standpoint, uh, you know, quite a few of our customers are uh, using our uh, products like uh, the Smithfields of the world, the Pepsi, mm -hmm. Walmart, Sam's Club, and so on. And um, their primary, the, the biggest area where they've seen benefit is the inventory management on their side, because we provide ETAs on when a particular a uh, truck will arrive with a particular shipment and what that sh shipment contains. And uh, having that visibility has definitely helped, you know, plan their inventory, accept mm -hmm. orders even when inventory is in motion. Like previously, if you look at it, unless there is inventory at a particular warehouse, customers would never accept new orders. But now we are clearly seeing that there is a change in behavior if they can start you know operationalizing the data and ensuring that even when the inventory is in motion customers are now willing to start incorporating that into their order life cycle and along with ai like i already said you know uh, the accuracy and then addressing specific problems these are getting way more magnified now where any customer can come up with a specific problem, whether it is a procurement issue, whether it is a logistics issue, whether it is a, a track and trace issue or what have you. Customers can very pointedly address those problems with AI. And those benefits in terms of, you know, carrier performance, um, on time uh, uh, in full and so on and so forth, they're seeing multitude of benefits with these approaches. Fantastic. Let's talk about the real-time data impact. I mean, everything in the supply chain is moving, changing second to second. You know, how do you think about harnessing that real-time data? And, you know, what are the challenges with real-time that other systems might not have? Right. So basically the real-time data so far has been um, limited to, I would say, the GPS fitted on trucks or mm. the AIS data from vessels or, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, rail um, uh, GPS pings and so on. Uh, but like I said, with AI, I think even disruption events, 
um, specific events at ports like the birthing rates, you know, what is the birth occupancy rate at a given port? Uh, similarly, what is the uh, gate occupancy rate at an airport? Uh, terminals, rail terminals at any given point of time, how many rail cars are uh, present? Mm. And so on, both which are becoming more and more democratized, I will say. And accessing this data and making sure that we are using it in real time, um, that adds a completely different dimension to the real time nature of supply chain. And that is, again, like I said, you know, one of the biggest benefits of AI that uh, we've unearthed. Wow, fascinating. So you obviously track trends, short term, long term trends as EV of technology. What are some of the trends you're tracking in IT and supply chain in 2025 as we, you know, kind of look into the new year? What are you excited about? Um, I mean, it's AI, AI, AI. <laughs> I think a lot of the, uh, you know, previously discussed concepts in supply chain, like whether it is the digital twin concept, whether it's the control mm. tower concept, um, all of these have been given a new lease of life with AI. That's That's the way I'm kind of looking at it. And uh, specifically with respect to, uh, uh, you know, supply chain companies and IT companies within supply chain, um, it is very, very obvious that whichever customers I visit, uh, they have a very clear mandate to start incorporating AI into their day-to-day -day operations. And uh, which absolutely is the right direction, uh, I think, uh, in 2024 or 2025. And uh, I think more and more companies are getting to a point where they are very clear that AI is going to give them that next frontier or next plane of efficiency that um, has been missing. I mean, as you know, right, supply chain is a, a bit of a tribal uh, domain mm -hmm. where there are pockets which are not as modernized. And I think companies are looking at this as an opportunity to completely skip even the SaaS revolution, right, where people were just going in with those uh, spreadsheets and pen and papers and then marking, yeah, this truck has arrived and it's at this gate or this dock. I think from there to how AI can manage an entire yard or mm. you know, looking at, uh, you know, incoming um, uh, shipments as well as outgoing shipments, marrying the two and breaking down the silos. Like we have... Uh, supply chain specifically is a, is definitely very, very siloed to make it more simple, right? You have a procurement department, you have a, a logistics department, you have a transportation, you have a track and trace department with not much communication happening between them other than just the need to know information. And that actually gives rise to more inefficiency. And the more and more these silos are broken down, the you know the synergies that happen in a natural network they can be taken advantage of and i think companies are very clearly realizing that ai is a tool that can help them break down these silos because like i said previously a lot of this data existed in papers and somebody was writing them down with pens and papers and stuff like that whereas with ai now if they just take a photo of that paper, AI can probably understand exactly what's going on, what is written over there. Similarly, with cameras all over the yard, even at ports, AI knows exactly which truck is coming into a facility, which truck is going out, what's the which dock it was in, what was packed, and so on and so forth. So marrying information from these different sources and just managing the end-to-end. And uh, I think that is what is attracting more companies. And they're very, very clearly what we are seeing is um, our customers have a very clear mandate to adopt AI in 2025. Well, it's an exciting time. It'll be an exciting year to watch. Um, you have so much experience in this domain. How do you suggest business leaders, technology leaders get started to drive this kind of change in their organizations, a lot of companies have very old, you know, infrastructure, best practices, maybe uh, workflows. What's your best advice for getting started in your experience on a journey with Forkites? Um, 
I mean, I would suggest uh, some of the most successful approaches that I've seen are starting small because mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a new technology, right? And uh, people need to get used to it. There need to be new uh, workflows built around it. They need, there needs to be new data uh, that's coming in to support these workflows. So it cannot be business as usual. So this, this is a revolution we're talking about. This is not just a small change. And so my... The, the most successful approaches what I've seen are when companies take a particular workflow or a particular task and then use AI to automate that workflow or task. Look at the learnings that they have. What do they, what is the change management they have to do in their entire, um, uh, you know, the supply chain side of the domain to be able to incorporate AI to take care of one workflow or one particular task that is very, very manual in nature. Once they have one or two of these under their belt, then you can truly think about how do we adopt this company-wide as, you know, like the revolution it potentially is going to be. Well, great advice. Thanks so much for the insights and the conversation. Really eye-opening stuff and keep up the great work. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks everyone for watching, listening, and as always sharing and uh, see you next time. Thanks.